Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Great, great to be out, and we have the wonderful treat of this young couple that's come to share with us. So, David and Lily Johnson. So, I'm just going to pray, and then it, turn it right over. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity we have to uh, be together this morning, and for the opportunity to meet David and Lily and uh, learn more about them. So we would pray now that you will bless this time and that we'll be able to learn so much and that this will lead toward us being able to pray for them intelligently in ways that would be beneficial. Thank you again for what you're going to accomplish and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so come on up and share with us. Bom dia a todos, é um prazer estar com vocês hoje de manhã. Meu nome é Davi, a minha esposa Lily, somos missionários do país do Brasil. If you didn't understand that, that's because that was a different language, okay? <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, we're David and Lily Johnson, missionaries to Brazil, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. And that was Portuguese, for those of you who don't know. Uh, it's very similar to Spanish, but that's what we speak in, Bra in Brazil is Portuguese. Uh, we were settled by Portugal instead of Spain, so we're the only country in South America that speaks Portuguese. <laughs> that being said, we're also the largest country in South America, so it kind of balances out. But uh, anyway, we're um, excited to be able to go back to Brazil. I uh, grew up there as a missionary kid, and my parents have been missionaries there since 2005, and my grandparents are actually also miss missionaries there. And our, I'm going to play a video here in, a, in just a minute, and that'll tell you a little bit more about um, just our family background and what we plan to do in Brazil. Uh, and then after that, I'll have Lily give her more, it's just a brief testimony, but I'll have Lily give her testimony, and then I'll share with you some things um, about our ministry in Brazil that we plan to do, and uh, some other things of that nature. Um, we're on deputation right now, and uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, deputation is, is a term that we use um, for when we travel around and visit churches and present our ministry, and, and as we're raising support to go to the field, and then well, once we're already on the field to come back, we call that a furlough. Uh, but the neat thing about the word deputation, which I don't know, you might know this, you might not, I learned it somewhat recently, uh, but the word deputation has to do with the word to deputize. And if you think about a, a sheriff's department, you have the sheriff, and he is um, he has authority in a county, and, and he has his deputies who he deputizes to give that same authority in that county. And so as, as we travel to different churches, what we're doing is we're partnering with those churches and they are deputizing us, you as a church, uh, when you partner with us, you deputize us to be your representatives in Brazil and to have all the power of representation of your church in another country. So it's kind of a neat little term that I, I enjoy sharing that with people just because I think it's cool. And uh, so I thought you might think it was cool too. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play the video and then I'll let Lily just Come on up and, and show a little bit of her testimony, and then I'll come up after that. So, uh, here we go. In the summer of 1974, my grandparents, Dan and Jerry Johnson, left the U.S. to fly to Brazil as missionaries. Six weeks later, my father was born. He surrendered to be a missionary when he was nine years old. And in the summer of 2005, my parents, Brian and Rebecca Johnson, flew to Brazil as well. We are David and Lily Johnson, and God has called us to return to Brazil as missionaries. God has blessed us with an amazing heritage, and has given me the wonderful opportunity of growing up on the mission field. Through my parents' example and teaching, I learned that serving God was the best life. Ever since I was young, I felt the desire to return to Brazil. And in 2020, God confirmed in my heart through a night of much prayer and scripture, that he was calling me to Brazil. 
I was raised in a second generation of Christian home. I was saved at the age of 13 and have always been surrendered to God's will for my life. I met David in college and we started talking. Before we even got serious, he asked me, are you willing to go to the field of Brazil? I said, yes, of course. Brazil is the fifth largest country in the world by land mass, and the sixth largest country in the world by population, with over 211 million people. Brazil is a hugely diverse nation, from booming cities of over 20 million people to the dense and sparsely populated the Amazon rainforest. Brazil is home to an estimated 15 to 20 percent of all living species, and up to 70 percent of the known plant and animal species. It is also a true melting pot for people who from all over the world, including Europeans, Africans, and Asians. In fact, Sao Paulo, Brazil's largest city, hosts the largest population of Japanese outside of Japan itself. Brazil also has 200 indigenous people groups and around 150 localized communities. The largest religion in Brazil is Catholicism, with around 66% of the population claiming to be Catholic. The second largest religion is that of the Protestant movement, with Pentecostals being its largest component. The Pentecostal movement, often mixed with Spiritism, is the fastest growing religion in Brazil. Oftentimes, the church will move into a neighborhood and milk the people for as much money as they can. They sell soaps to wash away evil spirits, salts to cleanse from sin, and many other spiritual items. They will often bring in actors to have mock healings, just to bring in extra people. There's a great need for the true and healing gospel of Jesus Christ amongst the people so confused by the false teachings of the world. In our first year, we will be located in Sao Paulo, which has over 21 million people in the metropolitan area. We will be helping in an already established church planted by David's parents while I learn the language. In 2019, we were able to visit and help out in the church there. I played piano for the services, pretended like I could understand the sermons, and helped to pass out flyers. While passing out flyers, I would say, good morning, from Portuguese. They would usually respond with, thank you, and I would say, you're welcome. Well, after I felt confident, someone responded to the flyer with, good morning, how are you? And I said, you're welcome, and kept walking. I came to fall in love with the place I will soon call home. Portuguese is the official language of Brazil and is spoken by all but the indigenous tribes in the Amazon. After Lily learns the language and culture, we plan to start a church in one of the cities around São Paulo. One of the cities we are looking at is called Bragança Paulista. Bragança Paulista has a population of 170,000 people and has no churches in life here. We will plant a church and train up nationals to follow in our footsteps. Just outside the city, we plan to purchase property to start a camp ministry, which will allow us to host Bible camps, pastors' conferences, creation camps, team camps, and so much more. We desire to use this ministry as a tool in helping reach and teach the next generation of pastors and servants of Christ. Through our ministry, we plan to plant churches in many of the smaller surrounding cities, as they also have a great need for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. God is calling us into the ministry, and he may be calling you. Will you answer that call? Would you consider stepping out in faith and embarking on a journey with God? There is nothing greater than serving God. And we are so excited to see what God will do through us. Please consider partnering with us in your prayer and financial support. May the Lord bless you. Well, like he said, uh, my name is Lily, and uh, we got married last year in January. Right before I graduated from college. So we got married in January, we got accepted into our mission board in June, and then we started deputation in October. So it's kind of crazy after we got married, hit the ground running. Um, but I grew up in Michigan, um, up in that part. Not the Upper Peninsula, but in the, 
in the mitten. And uh, I was able to grow up in a Christian home and grow up in a Baptist church. And um, I got saved when I was 13 years old. But um, God was working through my life when I was 12. So before I even got saved, God was working in my life. And um, I did want to mention with the VBS going on this week, um, you know, it's not a waste of time to invest in young people. Um, so I'm a product of things like that. So just wanted to encourage you all. But um, so like I said, I was saved when I was 13 years old. And I was homeschooled and grew up in a Christian home. And then um, God told me he wanted me to study music in college. So then I went to Hiles Anderson College in Indiana, and I studied music, um, learned how to write music, learned how to play music, um, put together sheet music, all the different aspects of music. Um, and then uh, we met the end of my freshman year, so we started talking, and like I said in the video, he asked me if I was willing to go to Brazil. So I said yes, otherwise I wouldn't be here <laughs> right now. <laughs> Um, but I'm very excited to go to the mission field, um, and I'm even, even able to use the music that I've learned. Um, I've already been able to use that, and um, it can be used on the mission field as well as here in the U.S. Um, so I'm excited to be a part of the ministry in Brazil there. Um, right now I'm learning Portuguese, so I was practicing this morning because <laughs> Karen was right there. Um, so I'm working on it. We're going down in, in November, so I'm trying to learn as much as I can before we go to take a trip down there. Um, so you pray with me about that. Um, I think I can get better. So I want to I want to be able to win someone to the Lord, um, or at least attempt to witness to them this November. So pray about that, and um, we're glad to be here today. That just reminded me of uh, the first time my mom tried to witness to someone in Portuguese in Brazil. She was in language school and learning Portuguese and uh, you know, working hard at it. And it it's, it's a little frustrating when you get to a mission field because you know, you've been going to different churches and you can witness in English and, and then you get to another country and you don't speak a word of their language <laughs> and you can't do anything. It's like, okay, I'm on the mission field now and I can't do it. <laughs> And my mom felt that way, and she was learning Portuguese, and she felt confident enough to try and witness to someone. And my dad was, uh, I think he was at the store, I don't remember, he was out of the house, and uh, so this man came, in, in a lot of the neighborhoods in Brazil, we have uh, kind of a security booth, and there'll be a security guard that just patrols the neighborhood, and then um, they'll come and ask for like a tip on occasions, just to, you know, like every, every couple of weeks or so, they'll come and ask for a tip, and maybe two or three times around Christmas. And <laughs> but uh, they, that's uh, just kind of how, how a lot of neighborhoods are there. And so there's, there was a security group right across the street from our house. And this man came up and sat down on the bench there. And so mom was like, this is the perfect opportunity. I'm going to go witness to you. So she goes out there and starts witnessing to him. And so she's witnessing, and, and then she's getting to the end, and all of a sudden, the guy jumps up and runs away. She has no idea why. And and so she's, like, really frustrated and upset, and, and my dad gets home, and my mom tells him about it. She's like, I'm trying to witness to this man, and he, he got all upset and jumped up and ran away. And my dad's like, what exactly did you say? <laughs> and so... Come to find out, my mom had told him that uh, Jesus was the that Jesus died on the horse uh, for our sins, and that He's the only truck to heaven. And uh, if you want to accept Him, you should take off your head now. And <laughs> that's about when He left. So, <laughs> uh, so the the joys of of learning a new language. <laughs> I had the advantage of growing up there, I already speak Portuguese, uh, so I don't have, um, can I have a leg up on, on that, because when I get there I can already communicate, which is very helpful, uh, but uh, I have Lily, of course right now is learning, and she'll be learning more once we get there, and we'll have uh, more formal uh, 
language training for really both of us, more for her sake, but then also uh, I'll be getting some uh, Portuguese grammar rules and learning those a little better uh, because that is complicated. And uh, so that's something that we'll be doing when we get to Brazil. And my mom and a Brazilian lady, uh, Daleti, who is a missionary to um, the prisons there in, in Brazil, her and her husband have been uh, working with prison ministries for as long as I can remember. And uh, her husband passed away last year. And so she has been dealing with that, but has still been ministering to the women's prisons there in, in her area. And just a, a great lady. And she's working with my mom right now. And they're almost done with it, but they're writing a, uh, a better language curriculum for new missionaries. Uh, because the language school that we've used in Sao Paulo for years and years uh, only pre only teaches business Portuguese now. And they have moved away from teaching any um, theology terms. And, and so that's, it doesn't exactly work for missionaries not to learn anything, any Bible terms. And so they, they've been working on that. And it will also teach us Portuguese grammar, which the language school there never did. And uh, it's all by rote memorization in the language school. Uh, so you never learn why you say things the way you say them, <laughs> which leads to people putting the wrong gender with things and, and the wrong tense. And my mom has had that problem for most of most of our time in Brazil, but um, I'll get to something in a minute here. Uh, but she is finally at the point where she is very comfortable with the English uh, grammar. And that is a result of something that we get to be involved with. And that's a great segue. <laughs> Um, so there's a couple things uh, that we get to be involved in in their ministry in Brazil. Uh, we'll be working with my parents when we get there, and then um, we're not sure exactly how long that period will be. Uh, we're thinking probably somewhere between three and six years, just because of the way leases on houses are right now. And so that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Uh, but that will obviously be something that once we're there, we'll be praying for the Lord's leadership on that and His guidance and, and just when to to break away and start our church. Um, but while we're with them, outside of just, you know, normal church activities and helping in their church, there are two um, main ministries that we get to be involved with. The first one is uh, we have an online radio broadcast that we started uh, early this year. Uh, so it's something that's very new to us and it's been going for probably five or six months now. And we broadcast 24-7. And uh, it's, of course, just during the day right now, it's mostly just good conservative Christian music. And, and overnight we have classical music and then at two times of the day we have preaching. And we're going to be working on more programming for that so that we can actually have uh, some different radio programs with Bible uh, teaching. And I'll be doing some creation science things and teach, teaching that. But then also, Lily and I get to help with recording um, some, some music for that as well. Uh, instrumental music is something that's very easy to use, and it, you don't have to translate it. It's universal and it's nice. <laughs> and so we have a large collection of instrumental Christian music that we use on the radio. But there's only about three or four families that have CDs that we would um, be able to, that we're able to use uh, for our radio. And so the, the sun selection of music is very limited. And so we'll be helping record some sun music. Uh, also with uh, music translation and things of that nature. Uh, so that's one of the things that we get to be involved with and uh, one of the things that Lily gets to use her musical talents for. And uh, the second thing, which is what has helped my mom with the Portuguese, is um, we get to be involved with, well, let me, let me give a little bit of, of, uh, of background to this. Several years ago, 
uh, Brazil started changing some laws. And they started move, um, adjusting laws on education. Uh, before that time, for a Brazilian to homeschool was not legal. That was not a legal, uh, legally recognized education. Uh, we, being American citizens, were able to uh, homeschool because of our because of the laws here, and they honored your uh, your home country's laws in education. Uh, but for Brazilians, that wasn't an option. But with the law changes, that has now become an option for Brazilian citizens. And they can now legally educate their children at home. And a lot of families are deciding to do that because their public school system is just garbage. And uh, so we're actually in the process of writing their school curriculum for homeschoolers. Uh, we started with kindergarten. And my mom just finished fourth grade, and she's got just a couple more subjects to do in fifth grade. And I am writing the science curriculum for um, currently for sixth grade, and I'll use the pretty much sixth grade and on for the most part. And I'll be writing the science for that. So that's something that we get to be involved with. And we already have um, at least six families using the curriculum. We have another family coming on. Uh, next year, and uh, they have uh, more coming on uh, constantly. So uh, that's something that is needed, and that the the parents are asking for the they're asking for it, and they they want that. And uh, there's one other uh, curriculum that I know of in Portuguese that is uh, Christian. And Bible based, and they only have through the fourth grade, I think. And it's been that way for several years. Uh, so it's not something that they have been making much progress on. And uh, so we have we already have a couple of people who have been on that curriculum that are switching over to ours. Um, it's my mom has gotten a lot of compliments on just how well it's written. And my mom is really a great teacher. And God has been able to use her talents in, in that field to be able to write curriculum and make it enjoyable and very educational. And, and one of the benefits of writing our own curriculum is that we can just base it all around the Bible and scriptures and God. And, and that is something that we have done. And in every subject, in every grade, we have written in to a lesson, the plan of salvation. And so we actually have a Pentecostal family that's using our curriculum that found out on vacation from one of our church members that we had the curriculum. And, and uh, really an interesting, interesting story there. But uh, they came in and met with my parents and talked about the curriculum and then just bought a little level of curriculum while they were there. And so now they're using our curriculum, and it has the plan of salvation in it, so both the parents and the children are exposed to the gospel through that curriculum. Uh, so it's something that we're praying that God will not only use to educate young people, but also to expose them to the gospel so that they can be saved, and, and any parents that are unsaved as well. Um, so really a big opportunity, but also a really big job. <laughs> I don't know if you um, know this, but writing curriculum is harder than doing it. And <laughs> <laughs> My mom is re really incredible at it. She can write. She can sit down and write like, three weeks of, of curriculum in, in a single city. And here I am trying to get like chapter one. <laughs> so uh, yeah. <laughs> But she said it will get better as I go, so I, I'm counting on that, because otherwise it's going to take forever to write my, <laughs> write my one subject. Um, but uh, I want to mention this, because I think it's really cool. And I, I love science. It's, it's kind of my field. I actually went to college for science. And uh, then God kind of dropped this in my lap, and I, I didn't know that this was what I was going to one of the things I was going to be using it for, but I'm, I'm glad to do it. Um, it is a lot of work. Um, but one of the cool things we're doing with our science curriculum, because we're writing it ourselves, and there's not necessarily
necessarily, they're going to get a, a much better education through our curriculum than they would through any curriculum in Brazil. And, uh, and I'm, I'm not just saying that. And I'm not trying to be boastful either in that. It's just that the, the school system in Brazil really doesn't teach them hardly anything. And my mom has a college graduate who graduated in, with, a, with a bachelor's in science in, uh, in biology. And she, she's having her proofread, uh, she was having her proofread botany. And she came back to her, and she, the lady came back to my mom and said, I'm learning so much in this book. <laughs> this is fourth grade botany. And this lady has a, a college degree in science and is learning more from our curriculum than she did from college. That's just, that's not to put up our curriculum, it's just to give a, a perspective on how poor the educational system is in Brazil and how how little they learn through their education system. They don't start learning science until I think it's third or fourth grade is the first year that they actually have science as a subject. So it's something that is, um, I think, when when they graduate from high school in our curriculum, they'll have a college equivalent degree. <laughs> and uh, but one of the things, the thing, the really cool thing I think that we're doing that yeah that science got away from me in a major way. What we're doing with our science curriculum is year one, so we have it in levels, it's level A, B, C, and so on. Level A is the simply just learning the, the six days of creation. And of course on the seventh day that God rested. So we learn just what God created on each day. So that's kindergarten. You're just learning the days of creation. Well, first grade, we learn about day one. So you learn about light, and you learn about matter, and things like that. Just in a very basic level, it's first grade. So you learn about reflection and colors and things of that nature, and just learn the basics of how light works. And then the next grade, second grade, we learn day two. Third grade, we learn day three. So in, in um, sixth grade, which is what I'm working on right now, we're learning um, I guess we first grade or either way. Whatever level I'm working on, it's level G, I think. Um, we're doing day, be day five of creation, which is the fish and birds. And so we, we work through all of that, and, and then we'll do day six with animals, and then we'll do a separate year for humans and human anatomy, and then just learning, um, you know, the, the functions of the different organs and things like that. And uh, and then we'll do a, an overcap on everything and then do chemistry and physics. And, and uh, so just something cool that we're doing. And we don't actually introduce the taxonomy system until after we've taught them all the days of creation, until we've taught them what God created each day. And then we'll teach them, okay, this is how we classify and organize God's creation to help us understand it and study it. You know, this isn't because this is how it evolved and these are the family trees. You no, know, that's what the world teaches. This is just how we can organize and identify things to give us a better um, base to help us study God's creation. And so that's just something cool that we get to do with our science because we're writing the curriculum and we get to write things. You know? <laughs> and then our senior year is apologetics. So just learning what the Bible says about things and really getting grounded in Scripture. So see, senior year of science is is Bible and science and what the Bible says about it. And, and so like uh, you know, young earth and creation and, and the flood and things of that nature versus evolution. And, and just learning to be firm on, on what the Bible says so that you can know what the lies of the world are. And that will be across all of our subjects Year. So just something cool we're doing with our curriculum, and I'm really excited about it, and uh, it's it's coming along, uh, but it is a lot of work, and we really appreciate your prayers on that. Uh, all right, let me think. I went a while on that. <laughs> I haven't really given my testimony much yet, so let's do that. <laughs>
So I was saved when I was about four years old, and uh, we were actually on, my parents were on deputation, raising support. Uh, we were, my mom and us were at our home church. I think my dad was away traveling for a meeting. Um, but we are just driving home from church, and I asked my mom, Mom, are we Christians? And kind of threw her off a little. She didn't expect that question from me. Uh, but she's like, well, Dad and Mom are Christians. But you have to be saved to be a Christian. And uh, so I was like, well, I'm going to be a Christian too. And so she explained to me, driving home in our in our little van, uh, explained to me what it meant to be saved and be a Christian. So I prayed and asked, asked God to save me. Well, as a four-year-old, I didn't quite grasp the fact that I only had to do that once. So every service after that, I would go to the altar and I would pray, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. Please forgive me my sin and take me to heaven when I die. Amen. That's exactly what I prayed every time. And I'd go back to my seat. Well, my mom kind of caught on. <laughs> and so she pulled me aside when, after one of the services. And she, said, she asked me, David, why don't you go to the altar? I said, well, I'm praying to be saved. And so that's when she explained to me that I only had to do that once. <laughs> and uh, so I have... I have stopped praying to be saved, <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to report that that status has not changed. Uh, but So that's when I, I was saved, and uh, God worked on my life through a series of different things uh, to lead me to the mission field, and it actually, from a lot of my life, I most of my life I've been telling people that I'd be a missionary to Brazil. But for most of my life, that was because my brother had been called to be a missionary. And when we went to the pastor to tell him, my mom set me up with him to help him because he was younger than me. And she wanted, he was nervous, and so I went up with him to help tell the pastor that he had surrendered to be a missionary. So the pastor wouldn't let me sit down. And I didn't know why. And I was confused. And then he announced that we had both surrendered to be missionaries. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm like not. I'm not gonna tell the pastor no in front of a whole congregation. <laughs> so after that, I started telling people that I was gonna be a missionary in Brazil. And you know, you catch the point where I believed it. <laughs> but uh, God would work on my own life through my junior high and high school years and and through college. And I think it would have been early high school, maybe late junior high. Uh, we were in the States and we went to a youth conference and it, God used the preaching uh, one of the nights of, of youth conference. There was a sermon on Elisha and him picking up the mantle of Elijah and just and following through on on uh, serving the Lord and that's when I, I told God, Lord, I'll be in Elisha and I'll do whatever it is that you want me to. So that's really when God started getting a hold of my life instead of my brother's life. And so I, at that point, I was willing to do what God wanted, but I kept telling people that it was, I was going to be a missionary in Brazil. That's just what I assumed I was going to do. And it wasn't actually until after I graduated college, and I was mowing a yard for my uncle. And mind you, he's not exactly the best of influences. He's not the person that you uh, that would be your life's role model. And uh, he's... You know, just he's gotten back to the Lord now, but you know, still has some things in his life that he, he wouldn't be the person you'd model your life after. And so, the most unexpected person to ever influence him to, to do the Lord's will. But I had been, I had finished mowing his yard, and we're out there talking, and he asked me this question. He said, "David, how long are you going to be in the area? Because I, I like how you're in the yard. I want you to keep doing it." How long are you going to be here? I know you say you're going to be a missionary. And I know your brothers are going to be missionaries. But I'm not sure about you. I was shocked. <laughs> Honestly. And, and I, I just, I was kind of like flabbergasted. And I told them all, yeah, I'm going to be a missionary. That's what I'm going to do. Well, that was a Saturday night, or Saturday afternoon. And Sunday, I worked on a bus route and ran buses into Chicago, and, and so Sunday was a really long 
one day. Uh, and then I actually worked security for the for the church in, in college at the time. And I worked the, the midnight shift. So I got I started working at eleven and I worked Sunday night. So Sunday was a really long day. <laughs> And so I got done with all my ministry work on Sunday, and I went and took my 30-minute nap before my, my all-night shift, and, and I got to work, and, and uh, I was out. On Sunday nights, I worked the shift alone. Uh, most other nights, I had a, a, another I had a dispatcher with me. Uh, but I worked the shift alone on Sunday night, and I went out. There's a lake on the property there, and I went out and sat by the lake and just opened up my Bible, and I just told God, God, I need you to show me that you want me to Brazil, that you want me to be a missionary, and not me. Because if I go to Brazil, and it's what I want, or if it's what God wanted for my brother, as soon as things get hard, why am I there? And God actually used a passage of scripture that I had just shared with my bus workers the, the day before on Saturday. And he used that to show me that God wanted me in Brazil and that it wasn't just because I wanted to be there. And so that's when God really got a hold of my life. And uh, that was in September of 2020. And we got married that following January. And Lily mentioned this a little, but then our candidate school for BIMI, our mission board, is in June. So we did that, and we started scheduling churches. And October 1st, we hit the road full time, and here we are. <laughs> so it's been, what is that, nine and a half months now? And uh, God has given us about 36% of our support, and our goal to get to Brazil is next summer, uh, June or July of next year. So that's that's our target, and that's what we're praying about. And we actually get to go down for a visit, uh, a more uh, official survey trip in November. We'll be down there for three weeks. And I just got the tickets uh, maybe two days ago. <laughs> maybe a little longer than that, but uh, maybe three days ago. <laughs> but uh, we're excited to be able to go down for a visit and see uh, the ministries we'll be working with there and, and look at some towns and cities to pray about where God would have us move in the future, but uh, that's just a little bit about us, maybe a lot of bit about us, and, <laughs> and about our ministries and what we plan to do, um, and we're excited to be able to get there. Um, does anyone have any questions about us, about our ministry in Brazil, about Brazil in itself, or anything of that nature? Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes, Sorry, when you were, when you were talking about... Um about, you know, your plans, the curriculum, and the creation. I just had a question about Brazil in general. Are they ever exposed to creation as, you know, in terms of science, or is it kind of like the U.S. school system where they're exposed to evolution? They would, in the school system especially, they don't want to be exposed to evolution. That's one of the things that they push the most in the schools. They, they, they barely learn history, they barely learn science, they barely learn anything. They barely know their own grammar, but they know that evolution is real. <laughs> and in fact, if you ask a, I've actually asked this question before. You can come up to a young person who's in, in school and ask them, like, and, you know, they're a Christian and they're going to church and you teach them the Bible and you can ask them, okay, who created the world? God. How long ago did you do? Oh, about 6,000 years. Did dinosaurs live with man? And they live with years ago. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> No, <laughs> so it's not something that is uh, that they even be exposed to at all, except for in church. And I think it's something that really isn't recorded. You know, that's that's the beginning of the Bible for a reason. It's it's a core foundation, and I think it's really important for Christians to understand that God created the world and and that it's a very literal creation. And once we understand that, you can build off of that. But uh, it's something that I think isn't taught enough. Even within churches, it's not emphasized enough. So that's one of the ministries that, that kind of I've always had a passion for is creation, uh, just teaching creation. In fact, my dad right now does 
about once a year, sometimes twice a year, he'll preach a creation conference at different churches. And it's just, you come in and you learn about creation and the flood and, and just learning how to combat evolution from a biblical standpoint. So that's something that we're trying to work at to give a good uh, foundation for Christians. And it's also something we all we want to do through our camp ministry, which I mentioned in the video. Um, but we down the road, we'd like to get a camp ministry started. And one of the weeks of camp that we want to do is a creation camp, where they come in and learn about creation versus evolution, and we'll just have a really um, involved week with that. So that's that's kind of where it is with that. Anyone else with a question? Yes, ma'am. What college did you go to? We went to Howells Anderson College in Northwest Indiana. And that's where we met. So our, our bus ride, actually. Well, our bus division. So. Yes. Any other questions? <laughs> now we uh, we're trying to as we schedule churches and, and part of the reputation is, is you know we contact a lot of churches and try and get meetings with them and, and just present our ministry like we're doing today and uh, we're trying to keep it a little more regional at a time like we focus on one region and then, and then another my parents have on on Deputation is on furlough. I think we've been in about 45 states. So <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> That's a lot of travel. And so my parents, I think three or four of my parents' largest supporting uh, states are California, Alaska, Michigan. Um, and I think Florida is one of those. And so we have, they have churches that support them all in between there. And <laughs> it's very spread out. So we, we're trying to focus on regions, and so we came, we'll be out here in the Northeast for about two months, and uh, so we contact in a, in a region, and whoever has a sit, has a sit, and we have a sit. <laughs> so we're thankful for it, because, um, you know, contacting churches is, it's it's a lot. You know, you contact, if you contact a thousand churches, you'll probably get a hundred responses, Maybe ten of those will be positive. So it's it's a a very involved process. But we're thankful for every church that has this. <laughs> so, any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, I just a little small interjection here. That's all right. Um, what actually is your mission goal? It sounds like you've got a lot. There is a lot. Yes. Do um, <laughs> you see? I mean, like as you said, in Brazil.
travel because Brazilians can't afford to travel and, and it's hard to get a job in a location. Um, so we're trying to basically equip them with as many tools as we can to help educate them and, and train them to be able to plan their own churches and, and witness and, and reproduce on their own. Because that's the end goal is to make them self reproducing And so doing that through curriculum and then camp ministry as a uh, kind of a supplement to, you know, supplement for a church and, and other things is to add on to that and then eventually through the, the Bible College. So the end goal is to get reproduced churches. And that's our ministry is to plant and, and help make churches self-sustaining and reproducing. Uh, but through those several other ministries. So there's a lot on our plate, but there is um, a very specific uh, end goal with it all. And it all has that focus in mind. So yeah, very good question. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Um, it'll be a low cost for them. Um, there, there will need to be some cost just to uh, upkeep it. And um, we also want to do some um, periodic face-to-face uh, -face as far as like over Zoom or, or something of that nature where the students could actually have interaction with the teachers because that's the best way you're going to learn and, and be able to gauge their, their um, progress. Uh, but it, it will cost, but very much less than if they had to travel and, and pay for lodging and things of that nature. So it is a, a low cost on the college's yeah, It's not up and running yet, but eventually we'll get there. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yep.